Breakups are often the symptom of problems in a relationship. My workbook series, The Knowledge, is focused on helping you change your life in four key areas. Retaining the information that I teach, personal growth, improving your relationships, and of course, reattracting your ex. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hey everybody, it's Murr from Impractical Jokers. Listen, if you're like me, you're single. <laughs> and you're like, what do I do? How do I get a date? What? Here's how you get a date. I recently met a guy, his name is Craig Kenneth. Super nice guy, he's a dating coach. I mean, top of the line dating coach. He's such a nice guy. And I was like, you know what? I gotta use your services, Craig. Craig, call me, cause I got no plans and it's a weekend. <laughs> so check him out on YouTube, you'll like him too. Bye. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about can even the most extreme situations turn around? Change is always possible, I think. It is. Now, of course, if you are in an extreme situation, it doesn't mean it's gonna turn around. It's hard to know. There are so many different factors in it and how much your ex was it attached to you or their ability to to see or be willing to see that you will change or have changed the other thing that you have to really think about is how much work you've really done some of you guys are not being honest with yourselves in how much work you're doing some of you guys are putting in some work some effort here and there but not enough to make and create a real relationship or a healthy relationship. Many of you guys have extreme attachment traumas and you don't understand that you've got to work through that or you're going to continue to unconsciously replay those behaviors and every act them out. Time, every time, every relationship. Over and over again. But we can't emphasize how difficult it is. You have to own what you've done and own what you've not done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so some of you guys are in situations that are the most extreme. And this is going to be a follow-up to a video that we did, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago. Yeah. Um, and the video was, she doesn't love me or miss me anymore. You might want to go back and watch that before you watch this one. She doesn't love me or miss me anymore. It was a very extreme case where his ex repeatedly and methodically laid out and all of the and reasons. Brutally, yeah. <clears throat> brutally, yeah. All the reasons why she didn't love him anymore. And if you this one comes to mind, it was the one where she had listed a whole bunch of examples of you did this, you did that, you made me feel like this, you didn't help me move, you didn't help me pack, you sat there and said, well, it's not my stuff, you played video games all the time, you didn't have a relationship with me, when I would beg you to spend time with me, you would be angry, roll your eyes and say, oh, is this what you want? And th does that sound familiar to some of you guys? It might. But So we're going to do a follow-up to this situation. And we're going to talk about what's gone on since then. Now, this couple was together for about five years, and I believe they were going to get married. Yes. Matt, and, can I ask a question here? Sure. What do you think his attachment style is? I would say avoidance. I would too. Mm -hmm. And so his ex had tolerated a lot of um, inappropriate, selfish behavior for a very long time. Yes. And she laid it out as clear as possible, probably more so than any other video I've done. And it, it really hurt and it really was rough to see it, right? Mm -hmm. That yes. was one of the most extreme yes. cases, Yes. Uh, at least as far as explaining from the other person's perspective where we got a real good idea on what they were going through and why they were leaving, okay? So he had said the reasons that she broke up was his anger, his selfishness, and his anxiety. And so he was saying, um, hey, Coach Craig, as you'll notice by looking at my old email in April, so I guess it was a little bit a while longer, ago. Yeah. Um, she left me a lengthy text message outlining the reasons why we broke up back in March. Uh, after March, I went into no contact. On April 
30th, my anxiety got the best of me and I broke no contact and it was not good. I called her and she basically told me that she didn't love me anymore and did not miss me, which resulted in one of your videos on your channel. As a result, I went back into no contact and focused on myself. Since then, I moved into my new apartment. I have received a new credential at my job, which may lead to a promotion. I have also been seeing a therapist every other week to discuss and help with my healing. Well, good. that's good. Great. Hopefully, good for you. Uh, I, maybe you could look at getting weekly based on the level of issues. I was, I was going to say that because it will depend to some extent on the therapist's schedule. Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah. I also received medicine to help cope with my depression and anxiety. Wonderful. I'm now back into running and lifting weights. Lastly, I've been giving back to the community by helping to feed the homeless. Wow. So he's really he's made... He's really some, working. Yeah. Yes. He's doing good. And feeding the homeless feeds his compassion, which is a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. On May 5th, I requested your services and you gave me a strict plan to follow. In your email, you stated to not reach out again until she's ready. Uh, you also mentioned that it would take her several months to cool down. Well, Coach, I have to admit, you may be a psychic. <laughs> In early July, several strange coincidences, coincidences yeah. occurred. <laughs> I can't even speak. To put things into context, I noticed several events that transpired, whether coincidental or not, that were sentimental for the both of us. The first ev event I noticed was on Facebook. I took your advice and unfollowed her on Facebook back in April. However, I recently started to follow her because I felt like my mental fortitude had improved, thus having no desire to stalk her page anymore. In fact, I was feeling confident overall about my progress of moving on. Then, in early July, that's when I noticed the first strange coincidence. Around 8 p.m., I received a Facebook Live notification on my cell phone. It was on the Facebook Live notification from my ex-fiance. I waited for the live feed to end to watch a video so she didn't know I was watching. <laughs> to my surprise, she was at a concert. Mm -hmm. And this was a band that they both really liked. Okay. Okay. So, if she, if he had watched the live feed, it would have shown that he was watching. She would have seen that he's yeah. watching. So we waited till afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that was sneaky. I like it. <laughs> but she knew he liked the band. Yes. Okay. Let me read on. What made this relevant is that I first introduced her to that band. They are a French indie band who makes love music. In fact, we were going to use several of their s songs from an album on our wedding. She did not know about them prior to us dating and became enamored with them after a few shows. We went most recently together in October of last year. She not only Facebook Live one song, she Facebook Live our favorite songs that we like together. So that's certainly interesting. I, I would agree. Mm -hmm. More than a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. The second strange coincidence occurred about a week later. My ex out of nowhere broke no contact and texted my mom. My mom was completely shocked as well. Here is the text. Hey, I don't mean to bother you. I have a strange question. The cat has been really different since we split. I can tell you she's extremely distressed and unhappy and I think misses him. Oh. I was wondering if you would think about taking her. I tried to bond more with her, but she isn't having it. I really think she's his cat. If that's not okay, I just want to put her on medication. I don't want to put her on medication or anything if I don't have to. That's not the quality of life I want for her. Sorry to bother you. I just want her to be happy at the end of the day. The timing of this text could not have been more peculiar. Allow me to provide some context. Around that time, I proposed to her. So it was almost a year. That's like the anniversary. Exactly. Okay. Uh-huh. About three years prior. Yep. Almost the same date. Yep. 
If That's it, an anniversary it, Yeah, it might be the same date, actually. Yeah. Um, so it would have been our three-year engagement anniversary. Yes. The next day, she sends the following text to my mom. Okay, so that is very interesting. Yes, it is. Anniversaries are powerful, if you remember that presentation. Yeah, so either it was conscious or unconscious, unconscious in her. But it wasn't an accident. No. No. Unfortunately, my mom did not want to get caught between the texting back and forth. So my mom just texted her the following message. Hi, I sent Cam a message regarding the cat. He just moved out several weeks after you broke up with him. Ooh, so I didn't like that mom mentioned it. No. He just moved out several weeks after you broke up with him. So that's a little bit of a dig on her, don't you think? Mm -hmm. You broke up with my son, you know what I mean? Since then, I have not talked to him that much. You know he's always busy. Thought I would, I'd let, thought I let you know, sweetheart. I'm still keeping you both in prayer that one day you can talk. Have a joyful and blessed day. Well... So she said, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. I really need to rehome her at this point. She has really changed a lot since he moved out. I can't deal with her. She's really his cat. I got her for him. I hope he will take her. Okay, so she does seem to have a very genuine concern about the, the cat. cat. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. she's saying, I can't take care of this cat anymore. And so it, the cat, while the, the timing of it is definitely peculiar, it does seem like it's... A, a genuine, sincere interest in this cat's yes. health. Yes, well, well, I think she can't manage the cat, whether he's peeing all over the house or... Yeah, you know. scratching her while she sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> you broke up with him! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's my daddy? <laughs> okay, the timing of her breaking no contact was odd to me. Why did she wait almost four months after we bro broke up to tell me she's not bonding with the cat? When I moved out, I was almost certain that she wanted to keep the cat. In fact, when she asked me to leave, she mentioned nothing about the cat. Furthermore, I went to her Instagram page, it's public, and noticed that she has several pictures of her and the cat, and the cat looks happy. Well, it's hard to get inside a cat's head. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is the cat smiling? Yes, the cat's smiling. How do you know smiling. the cat's happy? Well, if the cat is, if she's saying that, you know, she can't handle the cat, the cat's doing something. Yeah. Yeah, cats don't get get rehomed for being despondent and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. My guess is the cat's peeing. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, poor cat. The cat's cat. pissed mm -hmm. off. Terrible, terrible pun. Yeah. I also thought this was weird because at the end of April when I broke no contact to talk to her, she told me not to call her no more and never to call her parents or family members, but yet she texted my mom. Well, it sounds like she's genuinely trying to do something about the cat. Right. So what is she supposed to do? Yeah. If she really thinks that this cat's mental health or well-being are at risk here, and she, she wants you to genuinely take the cat, what options does she have? Right? She could put the cat on medication. <laughs> she doesn't want to do that. <laughs> um, maybe give it some catnip? Well, they do, believe it or not, medicate cats and dogs now for anxiety. Sure. Yeah, yeah I did know that. Um, but... You know, in this situation, she doesn't really have an option but to right. contact him, yeah. unless she just gave it to somebody else. But and then you know that just doesn't seem. She's the avoiding right. contacting him. Yeah, she's trying to resolve it without doing that. But it is interesting on the day that she did. Yes, it is. So in the middle of July, after I told myself never to break no contact, I called her. I was admittedly nervous as I thought she was going to be abrasive. However. To my surprise, she was quite pleasant, and unlike before, very chatty. In fact, we stayed on the phone for 30 minutes just talking about how we could make arrangements for her to bring the cat to my new apartment, how the cat kept her up for the last two weeks from getting sleep, and how it was affecting her job. I wonder what it was doing. Maybe screaming all night? Maybe. Okay, a few days after four months of not seeing her and talking to her in person, she arrived at my apartment. Needless to say, I was extremely nervous, but I kept it cool. I made sure my new apartment was clean, and I left my work clothes on so I looked presentable. Oh, okay. As I came downstairs, she was waiting in the car. I approached the car. To my surprise, she got out and started holding a conversation with me. She even volunteered to help bring the rest of my stuff. 
I guess, up. To his apartment. Once in the apartment, we talked about everything. We talked about her job, family, and her possibly deciding to move. She even admitted telling me that I was right about somebody and how she tried to sabotage our relationship. I don't know who that person Tell is. That again, no? I guess there was somebody that tried to sabotage their relationship. I don't remember that from the first email. Okay. Unfortunately, there is some bad news. She also mentioned during her conversation that she has a friend. I did not want to be inquisitive and start asking questions or get upset. So I played it cool. I told her I wish her the best and want nothing but for her to be happy. And it felt good saying that because I have confidence in myself now. Good. And to my surprise, she replied by stating, Oh, he's nothing but a friend. It means nothing. He actually is in the middle of a divorce. It's going nowhere. We only go out for dinners. So that's interesting. That would she, she would come out and say that. She didn't have to volunteer that no, information. She didn't. No, she didn't. So they go out for dinners, but it means nothing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it certainly seems like she's kind of letting him know that this isn't something you need to worry about on some level. Yes, she is. But I can tell you <clears throat> how many times I've heard from various clients that see, helping to see somebody through a divorce often results in a relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This could go either way. Mm -hmm. But chances are, if he is still married and going through a divorce, he's not going to be ready for a new relationship anyway. After she said that, I left it alone. Good she then, for him. She then wanted to go out on the balcony where we used to talk some more. Or I guess where we talked some more. Finally, I told her that she should be heading out because it's getting late. She agreed and told me that her apartment is getting an inspection the next day and she needs to go home and clean. Without saying anything, she walks over to me and hugged me for almost six seconds. But who's counting? <laughs> I guess the circus or the rodeos would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't stay on that bull for six seconds. If you do eight seconds, yeah. that's perfect, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so he's excited. I was completely shocked. After the hug, I walked her to the elevator and then she left. Needless to say, I have several questions. Was this an example of her breaking no contact, even though she contacted my mom instead of me? I don't think so. I don't either. Because I think I, she was genuinely concerned about the cat. Yeah, I think so too. I have not heard from her in a few days. Should I go back into no contact? I think so. Yes, it was. it's working for you, buddy. You definitely want to leave her alone. Let her come to you. Even though she brought the remainder of my stuff and the cat, was she completely erasing me from her life now, considering there's nothing left of my stuff in her apartment? I don't think so. No. I think most people would have done that very thing regardless. I so. Yeah, I wouldn't interpret that. Um, <clears throat> she still has not unfriended me on Facebook, nor has she changed the relationship status, and it's been four months. Does this mean anything? Well, I don't know if it says in a relationship with you or just in a relationship in general. If it's just a relationship in general, she probably doesn't want to answer a million questions or right. get bugged by another right, right, lot right. of people. Yeah. If it still says in a relationship with you, that is more like of a confusing thing, right? Yeah. But if she didn't unfriend you, I mean, sometimes people do, sometimes people don't. Um, I wouldn't read too much into it. But she's been pretty friendly. She's being nicer, for sure. He says, should I break no contact in the near future? And am I... Uh, reading too much into the visit. Um, I think that she's certainly showing some signs of being nicer to you. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean she's going to want you back romantically, right? And, you know, he's also worried about this friend that... Uh, of course he, he is. Yeah. And maybe she wanted him to be. But you can't do anything or say anything about it. No. You've just got to leave she that she had bit. enough control not to do. It must have been hard. Mm -hmm. I would say... It certainly looks like a different picture right now. She's obviously being nicer. I wouldn't say this is an indirect, direct approach because she didn't even contact you. She contacted your mom and it seemed like it was about the cat. If it's about you, then let her reach out to you again. The interaction went well. She seemed to hug you and feel um, like she could at least 
you know, give you a hug and felt comfortable to do that, which is certainly a good sign, but we don't have enough information here that would make us think she's romantically involved with you again, especially after how extreme she was in methodically laying out why she didn't want to be with you again, okay? I think based on how uh, severe your case was and why she didn't want to be with you, you need to see a lot more behavior of her showing direct interest in you. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. But it's somewhat encouraging. That's how I would put it. Somewhat encouraging. Yes. What do you think? I, I would definitely say it's encouraging, but like you said, you don't want to get your hopes up and, right. you know... Yeah, protect yourself. Yeah, just continue to work on yourself. I mean, it's certainly not bad news. No, not at all. Right? It's certainly encouraging all the things that you saw. So, yeah, it could mean something, but it's way too early to tell. If I'm in this situation, I'm going to double my effort. Okay? This is going to say, to me, i got to get even more motivated because my chances are a lot better than I thought then, they were. Yeah, than I thought they were. So yeah. I'm going to double. I'm going to do whatever I can. I'm going to be going to therapy every week. I'm going to be picking up every book, watching every video. That's right. Doing all the workbooks, doing everything that I can to try and better myself because it's certainly encouraging. It's certainly encouraging. So, as you guys can see, a situation that was really extreme Dire. Yes. and seemed just absolutely to be at a place where it did not look good in a short amount of time has really made some major changes. Major right? changes, yes. And he's made a lot of changes, but I don't think it's nearly enough to what he needs to do to get prepared for this. He's made a great beginning. Yes. And I love that he's feeding the homeless. Absolutely, I do He's so. letting you know that he does have some compassion, whereas he didn't seem to have any compassion with you when you were moving and had the, she had the flu. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to know how he came to that, and I'd love to know what's going on in therapy, but clearly something's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. So keep up the good work, keep working on yourself, and you guys can see we don't know if they'll wind up getting together, but this is a success story already. Yes, I mean, is. he's already getting there, and if he yeah. continues like this, absolutely, he'll be like a new guy yeah. in another by Christmas time, right? I hope he'll keep us posted. I hope so, too. Yeah. And we're so proud of you for yeah, making for these you, changes yep. and focus on positively yep. impacting your life, not just sitting around being depressed and beating yourself up. You've done some major work here, and keep going. Double triple, do whatever you have to do because you want to be prepared if it does change and it does turn around even more. And it looks like it might. It, it's possible, Certainly right? Certainly possible. Yeah. Certainly a lot better than it was just a yeah, few months right. ago. Yeah, progress. So, that will hopefully keep you guys motivated that you can see that stories that are even more extreme than yours, for many of you, can turn around and can improve. So let's yes. see where this goes. Yes, and his restraint at not asking her about her friend really tells me something. Yeah. Uh, that he's got a whole different level of control. Absolutely. Uh, of himself, yeah. So, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And of course, when you want our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net, sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching, I do Skype coaching, and if you got to get with me right away, I do offer emergency Skype coaching. Margaret is also here for Skype coaching. Yes, I am available. Please feel free to sign up with me. Just click on Margaret on the top of my website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different, and every breakup is different. Work with me, and you'll get professional help on your situation. Just click on the link in the description below, or go to my website, AskCraig.net.